Hello and welcome to another video where today I'm going to be looking at um, bulging discs, back pain, um, all that sort of stuff and really showing you how it can very easily be exacerbated, created and kept going from just things that you think nothing of and even the things you think that are doing you good may in fact be doing you harm. So this is a, this is a very simple um, or very um, descriptive chart here that gives you a good analysis of what the pressure is on the discs in, in various positions from say lying to standing to bending, sitting uh, correctly versus sitting poorly. Um, so you can basically get an idea of how, like when we lie on our back, there's a lot less pounds of pressure or kilos of pressure here than, than we have when we're um, flexing the spine as such. Standing is our neutral, so in standing, this is this is not bad. All right, so obviously, if it was, we'd all have a trouble standing. So our discs are meant to withstand a certain amount of pressure. It's just when it starts exceeding uh, the amount that it's meant to that we're able to withstand um, that you start to encounter problems, especially when it's done for excessively long times. So, um, so lying is a lot less here and I'm going to show you shortly that this even itself can be a problem if it's done for too long. Even though there's less compression here it will come at a cost if we don't stand up. We need to stand up, all right? but we'll cover that shortly. Um, the main thing to get from this is, um, is this position here which is known as bending over but in a gym it's also known as a deadlift so if we've got some light load here. Um, the load here is now creating much more uh, chance of of problems going wrong. So demanding more stability and strength from muscles to resist gravity pulling these dumbbells to look to the ground. If you notice here though that the amount of pressure on the discs here in this position which is known as a as a like a trigger of pain is actually less than the seated one. So the seated one of without the load is almost to the equivalent of the of the bending one with load. It's actually higher than the one the bending without load, so just bending to pick something up, is actually less than sitting poorly for ages. So we don't stand in this position for hours on end. We'll only do it in and out, and you know you won't be stuck there for ages. But you can be easily stuck in this position for. Oh, some people are stuck in this for like eight hours straight, um, and you can see the damage that this accumulates uh, without you realizing it. Now, if you have load in this position. Um, you know, this is, and again, I would say we've got dumbbells here, but time itself just becomes the load. And now you're elevating the pressure on the discs to be way greater than if you were just standing up in neutral where there's a natural curvature and, the, and there's no pressure from flexion or too much extension for that matter. Um, all right, so this one chart really just describes a hell of a lot about what's going on with how people will remain in their pain if they continue to sort of sit in these and bend in poor position. I haven't even shown, if I shown the poor position of bending here uh, with load then you would actually see a, a bigger uh, a difference between these two as well. But just to give you an example of we, we treat this one with caution but but again we, we're only in that position for a handful of seconds versus being in this position and this one in particular for hours on end. Alright so now let's uh, if we move on to the next thing so so if, as we've said here, the nitrodistal pressures of seeding are much greater than that. Um, but what about the pressure on the disc when we're lying? So lying on our back, most people will find this relieving for a short time, but not for a great period of time. Anyone with bulging disc problem will find this very relieving. Um, extension related pain may f will probably find this worse because it's starting to compress them and they already have too much of that. So. Um, lying on this won't help them either because their back will go into too much extension the minute they straighten their legs. If they bend their knees, it'll be a much much more relieving. If they have their legs up, and I'll show you shortly in a minute, the benefit of that for a person like that. But the things that help an extension-related person will hurt flexion and vice versa. This position here is good because the spine doesn't move into flexion or extension. And this is why we usually prefer to sleep in this position. Um, having said that, there can be a person with shearing force where the spine sort of moving laterally over itself. This can create trouble. So that, that's where a lot of the flexion-related pain 
might find this, or definitely will find this more relieving. Um, now the danger of too much rest. Now I mentioned this before. Now, now if we went, if I go back to that slide at the beginning, you can sort of see um, here is only 25 kilos of pressure on lying there. But if we lied here for too long what happens is the discs begin to fill up with fluid so because the discs between each of our vertebrae are, vertebrae are packed with concentrated protein chains and they basically love water so overnight when we lie down these discs fill up with fluid and, and gently push the vertebrae away from one each other lengthening our spines that's why you're a bit taller in the morning than you are at night um, but it's also the reasons why our backs are stiff in the morning because if the discs are so full of full fluid they're sort of like water balloons ready to burst. So when you get up in the morning the spines and you stand up and the spine goes vertical the excess fluid basically drains out from it and after an hour or two you sort of shrink in size by a little bit um, but but importantly the, the the spines aren't sort of swell, swollen up enough. The reason they fill up is so that they get their nutrition that's what that's important to the health of the discs to get that and it's a natural sort of cycle of when they'll fill up and then they'll, they'll drain out normally it doesn't have any problems for anyone but if you've been sitting in excessive, excessive flexion now these discs that are swollen are actually going to start touching nerves and, and you're going to give you all sorts of pain because they're in a poor position to begin with and now they're just swollen, swollen right up so lying excessively for too long even though rest is good too much of it when you've got back pain actually makes it worse so you actually do need to stand up and move around alright so that's where some people will really make things a lot greater problems for themselves from doing nothing. Um, as I mentioned before, lying prone is a better position if you're a disc bulge because it just allows the gravity to pull the disc away from the sciatic nerve. All right, so um, this is a simple one where we've got the head on the on just a flat palm. Um, if I wanted to create a little bit more extension, I just put the chin on the fist there. Um, sometimes this is too aggressive, sometimes this is the better position, but in both cases just lying in this position just takes that spine out of flexion. Um, now the other thing to note with this is it's not just the spine that suffers from from uh, the excessive amount of sitting, the knee. It's very common for people to get knee trouble. You can sort of see here leaving this knee in flexion for a long time puts in compre increased compression in the patellofemoral joint. So this leads to um, real stiffness throughout the knees which then leads to poor movement which then leads to weakness which then leads to instability which then leads to osteoarthritis and all these other problems that we see a lot so so the sitting position for long periods creates huge compression in the spine but also the knee right? and that's something you just really need to be aware of and then you know if you're moving poorly because you're trying to favour your knee you're going to expose your spine to trouble when you stand up and do things so so you might get out of lying down, but now you're standing up all the time and the way you move is worse. All right, so now if we move to looking at um, lumbar disc pressures in various sort of exercises, um, these are very low level exercises. Usually these, a lot of these are like Pilates based type things, these ones, so, and what most people might regard as core things. Um, now you can see here, which I touched on a minute ago, that the lying down with my legs up on a ball or a chair from for that matter just having my hips at 90 degrees this is great for an extension related pain problem basically the reason it is is because it unloads my hips so there's no um, my basically my hips have just ta had all their weight taken away from them the minute I take that ball away and I have to use my hips to hold my legs up there's a huge compression force so you can see the difference, the same position, unloaded, loaded. Um, moving to the next one where I straighten my knees out, now there's an extended lever. So the lever is greater here. So there's, every time I extend a lever, I create more stress through the abdominal wall, which, which if I don't have the ability to withstand it, the stress goes into the spine. So by taking away the lever and shortening it, um, unloading the hips reduces the amount of pressure I, I have to um, have to, yeah, or that, that I'm going to be with, um, put up against. Um, again, I'll put the picture of standing here to show you this is like where a healthy body will be able to withstand about this much. It's when it exceeds this, you need to have greater strength and good movement strategies. 
lying prone, so we mentioned before lying prone is great, but and it relieves the pressure on the discs, but the minute I start adding extension in the hip extension, um, now I start to increase the disc pressure. So what was going to help me now will hurt me. Um, and again, if by adding an extra dimension to it, it now increases significantly. Um, and you can see here the abdominal crunch, how much pressure that puts into my discs is immense. All right, now if I've got good control and movements and, and I do everything throughout the day well, I won't suffer from it. But if I'm already in pain, this is not a good strategy to use this. All right, so um, better positions than these would be four point positions, so the, the, the which is known as the horse stance and um, various exercises like that. The main thing to understand is if I can just keep everything in neutral, I avoid disc compression. This is where my spine is uh, in its healthy, so this is a, uh, I shouldn't have normal, it should be ideal, would be a better word of saying that. Um, but ideal posture sort of relieves the stress on the lumbar spine and, and throughout the entire body and encourages the, the workload and the stress to go through the upper and lo lower joints, so being my arms and legs. Um, and especially the hips, they're meant to withstand a huge amount of force and, and be able to move a lot. It's just when they stiffen up that things start to go wrong. So coming back to our standing position, so a standing position has a natural curve in our back. We're not pushing the hips forward. Everything's sort of lining up ear, shoulder, hips, ankle. So that's a nice position there. Seated in flexion, as we mentioned before, horrible position for the spine to be left in for long times. Neutral, much better. Um, but even still, they're just sitting in this, as we've spoken about before, the knee is going to suffer. And just being stuck there for ages, it's very hard to sort of maintain the strength in this position, better to get out of it. In the exercise, this is these positions here both demonstrate good neutral curves. So you can see these three here are all good neutral positions. Um, this is better than the, the lying prone with the legs out straight. By just minimize, by shortening my, or bending my knee, I, I actually reduce the lever and the amount of strength. I still need good stability, but it's easier to control. All right, um, and obviously here's a push-up position where we, you know, we're again learning how to maintain good pelvic and uh, spinal position. So other exercises, cable push, deadlift, obviously this is bending with load, now single leg squat. Poor position here would be, oh, this would be a good position of, of tying our shoes up, a good position with a stretch, and a good position on, on bending over to pick up a bag. So these are everyday movements. Um, or maybe this one not so much, but even this stretch can be done poorly if I flex my spine to do a glute stretch. So I want to basically learn how to keep neutral in every single movement that I make. The more I can do that, the more resilience I create for my spine, and the better I, strategies of movement I teach my body to use to move. So then I don't uh, expose my back to any potential problems. Um, and this is really where we need to spend a lot of time re-educating people to firstly prevent the injury and if they've already got it how to move ongoing so that they don't get it back and, and keep it away for good. All right, so, um, so I hope you enjoyed that video and it gives you a bit of insight and these sort of things, you know, that first slide in particular, it's a great one to sort of just refer to a lot and really make you become aware just how much damage this sort of stuff is creating for you and, and how you'll never find a permanent solution to your problem if you continue to do this. All right, so getting up and moving around as much as you can. Rest is good, but too much is not. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed that video and it gives you a bit of insight into the reasons behind um, ongoing problems. All right, so I hope you'll enjoy that. I'll see you on the next one.